What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're looking at how to remove wrinkles out of clothing in Photoshop CC. If you ran into a problem where the studio didn't have a steamer, or the steamer was broken in our case, and the clothes weren't ironed in our case, then you're gonna have to do this because you might not have any other choice and you need a way to get rid of the wrinkles off the clothing. This tutorial is gonna show you how to do that because I have to do it anyway. And the method we're gonna use is called frequency separation. You may have heard of frequency separation before because a lot of photographers, including myself, use frequency separation to remove blemishes and smooth skin out. You can also use that to remove the wrinkles off clothing. So let's get into the tutorial, coffee first. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you get your image into Photoshop, adjust your raw settings or whatever. Don't make any edits before this. You wanna make sure that you get the wrinkles out first and then you can do all your editing and color changing and stuff like that after. So first things first, we wanna duplicate the main image twice. And what we're gonna do is hold Command J or Control J if you're on a PC and do that twice. That's gonna make two layers. We're gonna separate these into high and low frequencies. So we wanna name the bottom layer low and the top layer high. And what we're gonna do with the low frequency, which is gonna be the color, we wanna go to the filter and blur and then Gaussian blur. And I gotta move this till I get to some texture of the shirt. So somewhere in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly pull that back a bit just to show you what's changing here. And what you wanna do is slowly move that so that the texture starts to disappear and all you're left with is kind of the color outline of it. So we're gonna slowly move this until the texture starts disappearing. So somewhere around 5.2 looks pretty good. We'll hit okay. Then we're gonna go to the high frequency layer, go to image, apply image, then we're gonna change where it says merged here to low. And basically what we're doing is we're selecting that one layer that we named low. We're gonna change the blending mode to subtract. Then we're gonna leave the scale to two and the offset to 128. Don't ask me why, but I found that this works the best when I'm doing this, so just stick with that. Now you can see when we zoom in here, that what we're left with is just kind of the gray texture outline of the image. And what it did is it pulled the texture out of the low layer. Then we're gonna change the blending mode to linear light. So now you're looking at this image and you're like, Lee, it looks exactly the same. And you're right, because all we did was pull the textures out of the color and now we have the two and two separate layers. Now we're gonna put them in a group. So hold shift down, click on high and low, make sure they're both selected, then hit command G or control G if you're on PC. What that's gonna do is make that into a group and what we can do is toggle that group on and off to see the before and after. All right, so the next step is painting. So what you're gonna do is go up to the mixer brush. You're gonna click on the brush tool, hold it down, go all the way down to where it says mixer brush tool. Then we wanna change this right here because by default it's gonna be set to white. We wanna set that to transparent. We don't wanna be painting color on this. We just wanna manipulate what we already have. Load's fine, mix is fine, flow is fine. So the wetness is basically kind of like a real paintbrush if you're using watercolors. The higher the percentage of the wetness is kind of like having more water on your brush. So we're gonna leave this kind of around 10 because I don't want it to be too smeary. We kind of just wanna leave it so that we have to actually do a lot of brush strokes to get our area to look nice and smooth. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the low layer here. I'm gonna turn off the high layer. We're gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna go to like a targeted section we really need to smooth out. And we're gonna work right here. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. And basically what you wanna do is you wanna brush with the flow of the clothing. So you wanna make sure that you leave the flow of the shirt. You don't wanna go over those spots. You kinda of wanna make it look natural. And if you go against the flow, it's gonna look stupid. So I'm gonna slowly start brushing over top of these wrinkles and we're smoothing them out. So as you can see here, it's starting to nicely smooth those textures out. The remaining textures that are left Now you may have to adjust your wetness of the brush, maybe 20% if you wanna get a little bit more of a flow going. I just decided to leave it a little bit lower just to start out with. Now the more time you spend on this, the better it's gonna look. I'm just gonna quickly do this for you guys. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it. I'll show you the before and after. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the texture layer back on and you still see some wrinkles and we're gonna to have to adjust the texture later, but. I wanna to toggle the entire group on and off and just show you what we've done so far. So that's the original, and then this is what we've adjusted. So we've smoothed out a bit of the stuff. I'm gonna continue on here and keep smoothing it out. So 
So again, you wanna leave the shadow kind of the fold because that's how the shirt naturally flows and you don't really wanna remove that. Otherwise, it's gonna start looking fake. And right now I've got this looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the low layer off, uh, turn the background layer off. We're gonna go to the high layer here. As you can see, some of this texture still includes some of these kind of wrinkles and uh, cross sections that were going across the fabric. And in order to remove this, we can use the clone tool or we can use the heel tool. I'm gonna use the clone tool for this example. Make sure you're on the high layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Alt down beside the wrinkle and we're basically gonna clone over the wrinkle with the shirt material that's beside it. Now don't go too crazy because this could affect the texture pattern. And you just want to do it subtly. You don't want to go crazy with it. You just want to get rid of sort of those darker lines. So I'm going to turn the low layer back on, zoom out. And as you can see, the wrinkles are starting to leave. It's starting to look a lot better. If we toggle the on and off, this is before and then this is after, there's a huge difference. It looks a lot better. So I'm going to fix this one kind of in the middle of the shirt here. Now, if you found that the clone tool smoothed things out way too much, you can actually go to the sharpen tool and kind of go back over the areas that you clone stamped out. And that'll kind of add a little bit more texture back into it. Now this area still needs quite a bit more work. Okay, I'm gonna turn that back on. All right, so this is looking way better. If I spent a little bit more time on it, it would look way better. So I'm gonna toggle this on and off. This is before and this is after, and it just looks way better, your eyes aren't drawn to it anymore. I'll toggle it one more time. So basically if you do that, you're gonna be able to remove the wrinkles out of clothing, spend more time on it than I did and it'll look way better, you're gonna get really good results. And uh, yeah, hopefully you like this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it thumbs down twice. I'll see you in the next one.